Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will begin implementing query string model binding and the parameter object pattern for the project. In the previous lessons, I explained the query string in detail with model binding. Now it's time to implement it in our project using the get all async method of the planets controller. Throughout your developer career, you will encounter different approaches to model binding and query string implementation. For instance, when each parameter that the action method is going to receive is listed directly in the method, the code becomes cumbersome. For example, if we need to receive two parameters, we have to indicate that they are coming from the query using the from query attribute, repeated twice. We also need to define the parameters, name1 and name2, along with their types. This structure needs to be repeated in the repository interface and then in the repository class, creating complexity. Now imagine adding more parameters. This section with parentheses in the action method would grow, requiring repetition of this structure within the code. And finally, this model binding approach becomes messy. Instead of this cumbersome approach, we can implement the parameter object pattern using a class. This class will contain all the properties consolidating them in one place for easy reference. In the event of adding or removing parameters, it becomes a single place to attend, making the code well organized and reusable. Let's create a folder to implement the parameter object pattern and name it queries. Inside we can create a class and name it planets query parameters. In this class we can list the currently required parameters. Furthermore, this parameters list can be easily amended later. We can add or remove parameters, and everything will be located in one place for better organization. This first parameter we will create is of type string. It will be nullable, and let's name it filter by. We can duplicate this parameter a few times. The second parameter's name will be contains, and the third parameter will be sort by. Now we just need to refer to the available parameters in our code. Let's open the controller. In the controller action method, we can now receive from query attributes. So the parameter type will be the class planets query parameters we just created, and the parameter itself will be named after the class. In case we assign default values to parameters within the class in the future, for example, if the sort by parameter has a default value, then we need to reassign these default values. In the controller, we can reassign a new instance of the parameters class using a null call async operator and it will include the default values. Next, we need to pass the parameters we receive to the repository class, so we simply pass them to the getAllAsync method. Since this getAllAsync method is also defined in the interface, let's first receive it in the interface. We can copy the required part from the controller and then paste it into the planets storage repository interface. Now that everything is ready, let's implement the main part in the repository class. Again, we need to receive it in the SQL Planet Storage Repository class as a parameter. Additionally, we can duplicate the string with the planets variable, and we comment out this part of the logic for now. This variable will again refer to the dbcontext planets property, but this time to access properties, instead of accessing each element in the collection of planets using a lambda expression, we can simply use string arguments with the names of the navigation properties to dynamically include them. Therefore, we need to include solar system and water as strings. Since we need to build a query dynamically, we can use the asQueryable method. Then we need an if check to verify that both query parameters, filter by and contains, are not null and not empty. By conveniently accessing both queries using the parameter planets query parameters, we can perform this check. In case it's true, we can use another if check to verify that filter by equals name and we can ignore the case using string comparison. If all checks pass, then using the planets variable we can access every item using a lambda expression and return an item where the name contains the value we pass, using the contains query. Finally, we need to return the variable as a list. With that, the logic is completed, and we can open Swagger. In Swagger, for the first field, we need to write that we are accessing the name property. In the contains field, we can include the earth planet. And the third parameter is not functioning so far and can be skipped since it's nullable. If we send a request, the requested data is provided. Additionally, Swagger provides us with the query string we just sent. 
so we can see how it looks. Now let's verify that the method works as it used to work before, and we can retrieve all data from the database if we skip any parameters. All data is successfully received, so everything is correct. Now with this approach, using a separate class containing query parameters, the model is bound using the parameter object pattern. It's utilized in a single place, where we can instantly manage any parameters we expect to receive. As you remember, sorting is also achieved using query parameters. And this sorting will be implemented in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!